Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. So as you can see in the background, we have the Speed Factory Outlaw car. This is the car that unfortunately is no more. It was involved in a crash and they've since uh, built a, a new version, now all wheel drive. And very recently, I'm sure you saw it on social media, made 2,200 horsepower at 87 pounds of boost. Pretty crazy. Uh, but congratulations, guys. It's really awesome that uh, you can do that in a four-cylinder. Crazy power. 10,500 RPM. So, I mean, I know that they rev it higher or can rev it higher. So, there's probably even more there just because torque times RPM divided by 5252 is horsepower. So, make the same torque another 1,000 RPM higher and 3,000 horsepower four-cylinder. Who knows? That That's a little bit of an exaggeration. Anyway, today we are going to talk about the Haltech Dash. So let's open software and start looking. So the Haltech IC7 Dash is really cool, really easy to use. And we're just going to talk about some of the generic setup stuff. So in case you have this in your car and you have some custom sensors that they don't cover hopefully this will help you out first thing you need to do is download the icc software which of course is available from haltech and i'm not going to do any custom creation i'm just going to use some existing templates that they have and we're going to we're going to go over you know some of the the things that you can do um, obviously starting, this is what they call Hero 1. This is their default screen. The one that I used that I, I really like is this one, the Digital Matrix. As you can see, it does alarms, so you can do low oil pressure. You can name them whatever you would like. Um, another thing is, if you want, you can move, you can move its order. So depending on where you want to put the the dash screen that you you like um, you can you can make it close to the top it always seems to default to the Haltech Hero 1 I'm not quite sure how to change that but we can we can figure that out here later so we're also going to go look at this in the car so that you can kind of see it populated but it comes with a fair amount of default gauges and I've changed some, added some, and had to do some custom stuff, like, for instance, fuel level, which you can wire in. So it has its own uh, analog voltage inputs. Uh, it doesn't use ohms. Uh, it does have a pull-up resistor, but you have four inputs you can do. You can do turn signals. There's, there's a bunch of neat things. You have various... Uh, icons that you can put down here. It has a check engine light, it has nitrous active, battery light, launch control. You can see it's a little Christmas tree. So it, it has things that will pop up. Um, if you have a manual or an automatic and you take the time to set it up, you can see what gear you're cruising in, uh, vehicle speed, obviously RPM, your actual wideband, what the target is, and that seem, might seem like a lot of data, but in the car, you know, it's not really that bad. This particular car is flex fuel, so you can see the ethanol content. Um, it does have an odometer. Um, I don't know how to reprogram that so that it would match your car, but it will start over in the beginning, as long as you have vehicle speed. Um, depending on if you have a rotary, boot, a rotary trim knob or if you're using a CAN keypad, it'll show you what boost mode you're in. And then what the target boost is, um, this particular car, because it's flex fuel, also has fuel temp. So we can see that. Obviously, air temp, coolant pressure, and manifold pressure. So basic stuff. Now, I'm just going to show if you wanted to change a gauge real fast how easy it is. Let's say you don't want fuel temp. You don't have it. Uh, you have some other gauge. So you would just click on your channels. And anything that comes across can... And you can see it says all channels except PD16. Anything that comes across the can, you can put up there. So, and then here's the dash stuff. 
obviously also. And you can see I have it labeled Evo Fuel Sending Unit. I had to calibrate that. That was a little bit complicated. Um, I definitely recommend watching Haltech's video on how to do that. Let's see here. Let's see. Let's say we happen to instead have a road race car and we want to do brake pressure. Okay, cool. Just that easy. And you can have decimals. You can change the units. So if you want to change it to bar, KPA, whatever you want to, whatever you want to change it to, you can change the units on the fly. Obviously, you save it as whatever file, send a dash, it goes through its boot phase, and it's really very simple. Um, you can come in, and just like in the Haltech uh, Elite and Nexus, you can set up what all your units are going to be. Let's see, you could have turbo speed up there if you want, battery voltage, whatever gauges that you want. Um, you can set up what you see. You have various things as far as your parking lights, high beams. Um, you can wire RPM directly to the dash, your left and right indicators, vehicle speed. It has uh, night mode, so it will dim. Oh, and then that's where you change the, the startup screen. Easy. Okay, so you don't even really have to change the order they're in, but if you want to, you can, or you can do this. Um, and then we'll just look at some of the templates they have. They're actually pretty cool looking. So we've looked at that. The Hero 2 is more or less the same, slightly different colors. We have this one. To me, the speedometer is a little busy, so maybe we would want to change that. So it has a max value here. So maybe we're going to change it to 100. But then we need to go to channels. And anytime you want to change something like that, you, you click on channels. So change 100. Hit apply. And bam, it's done. You know, other than the, the sweep looks a little bit different. So maybe we would do something like this. Put a minimum value in it. We can, we can do a lot to change how that works. Anyway, sky's the limit. Um, then there are older style dashes. If you like that look, the IQC uh, 1 and 2, different colors. Kind of a little bit more classic look. Uh, you know, muscle car, let's say. There's a diagnostic screen, which is awesome that they have that um, because you can use this in the pits and set this all up so you can look at everything. Maybe you're the dyno. It's a little bit busy to me, a uh, lot going on there. So, you know, maybe you would want to delete some of these. Uh, next one, a basic race one, which is eight gauges, more or less like that digital matrix, but a little darker. Maybe it's a little easier on your eyes. Old school gauges. Uh, and you can't quite tell because the oil pressure alarm is in the way. Actually, let's turn that off. No oil PSI. We want... I'm going to remove it for the time being. They have just like a standard hard light like you'd see in something in a, a semi or old muscle car. For your your warning lights which is kind of cool or active light as the case may be um, and then i believe they have discontinued their tire monitoring system but if you have that in in there you could have that on a live screen for road racing and also have uh, 10 gauges here Slightly different layout if you want gauges on the outsides and the tire pressure on the, the middle. And then for the PD-16 diag, if you have a PD power distribution module or PD-16, you can, you can do that as well. Now, next thing, obviously, is alarms. We already saw the, the oil pressure that I turned off. Setting alarms is really easy. You just come in, set your RPM. It'll flash all of these. You can set up how many it flashes. You can, which ones you want to highlight. So as I randomly click, 
um, over boost again same thing 33 pounds so you could set that to, to 15 if it's a low boost car or pump gas on a Honda maybe 33 if it was ethanol whatever you need to do uh, coolant temp you can do that and you can also add so for instance if we wanted a coolant pressure alarm because that's a channel we can add that in and then threshold value in PSI maybe we don't want over 32 PSI so and we have threshold type so if it's something you want it to trip as it goes up in this case that would be upper threshold oil pressure you want it to catch it as it's dropping would be lower threshold all common sense so pretty easy stuff let's go look at it in a car so here's the dash in the car uh, as you can see just kind of looking out try to get my perspective here uh, it's nicely sized it's very easy very easy to glance down and see the size of what you're dealing with uh, there is a tack across the top I'll start it later but it's it's not difficult to focus on um, and see, check a individual gauge or kind of just look you know for that that quick safety check to make sure everything looks like it's right obviously as we've talked the the alarms are intuitive and easy to do so getting those set up they grab your attention they flash the LEDs um, but uh, a lot of companies seem to be starting to make uh, bezels for specific cars this is an Evo 8 um, maybe they got yours I'm assuming all the popular uh, sport compact cars they're gonna cover um, I know Haltech also has some mounting solutions as well, so hopefully you can do a nice clean install like this and uh, have a lot of more available data at your fingertips. One other thing that's cool is you can have the Haltech software and dash, I should say the, the NSP software for the ECU and the dash running at the same time. Some systems you have to disconnect one and go to the other, but this one actually allows you to do both. So there it's booted up. I'm going to kind of show you some of the stuff that you can do. This has a CAN keypad in it as well, which that's going to be a separate video. But if you watch the boost mode and boost target, you can see that it starts to change. Just keep going up. Or you can go down. And then there's also a scramble boost, which you hit and hold, it's a momentary button, and then that changes the target. So let's start it. it starts pretty good since it's on E70. A little loud. But as you can see, it starts to populate. Looks like I need to add some cold start fuel. I'm a little lean there. But we have fuel pressure, coolant temp, fuel temp, air temp, 48 miles on the clock on the new build. This uh, dash went in at the same time, so kind of cool as far as how that works. Five pounds of coolant pressure, 97% in the gas tank. Pretty cool stuff. I strongly recommend getting one. Uh, if you can budget it and you are in need of a dash, it definitely gives you a, a lot of capability for uh, driver uh, education, feedback, whatever word we need to put in there, um, so that you know what's going on in your car as you're driving it or racing it. Okay guys, I think that pretty much sums this one up. I hope you're all doing well. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.